the school hours. And then ultimately it just kind of ran from there. By taking? Beginning, beginners weightlifting okay. uh, when I was at high school and then went into advanced weightlifting. And then that's kind of where my just, I started researching on my own. I started looking up nutrition advice. I started trying to, you know, figure out what was working and what wasn't working. And then before long, I had people asking me for advice. And then I thought maybe this was something that I could do long term. You know, is that it's probably not like a traditional career path to owning, managing, running a gym, right? Do you think most of it happens that way? We were just like, I don't think so. so. I mean, ultimately, getting to a point where you're running, managing a gym, I think is all not recording. It's okay. I'm just talking. We can talk about this again. We can start right now. Yeah, you can start. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were ready. I wasn't sure. No. Sometimes I do an intro. Sometimes we just kind of take it. I mean, it's just we're we're in a good groove. So let's go. Um, so yeah, you want me to just keep continuing with that? Well, I think, um, the question, the question I had was like, I don't think there's a traditional career path for owning a gym or running a gym. Is there? I wouldn't know. I feel like I kind of organically fell into it just by happenstance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the people I know or the gyms that I've been to, that's, there's not like a college degree in owning a gym, right? You certainly have like marketing or yeah. business or business entrepreneurship, or... which can help. But mm-hmm. I think most of the people don't have that foresight at 18 or whatever to pick that out and say, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I wanted to own a gym. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I was like, I want to own a gym. But that was really just like, I really like to work out. So I was like, okay, I like to work out. I want to own a gym. That's like when you're seven but... and you like dogs. You're like, I want to be a vet. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you actually exactly. did it. But I did it. Yeah. 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 I never really thought about that. But yeah, I guess I did. Making dreams come true on the local 636 podcast right here. (laughs) That's all we do, baby. We're with uh, Nate and Allison of Move on Main and Move in Westport of just Move Move Gyms, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So we want to talk to you about uh, about St. Charles, about the gyms. Um, I have been working out there for like two years now, and just did the six week challenge. Is there a name for that? Is it just the six week challenge? The pretty generic six week challenge. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe we'll come up with something. Six week transformation challenge. Technically. Okay. I mean. You kind of transformed. Yeah. You definitely did. Yeah. We can we can talk about that, but uh was just super happy with that and wanted to get, have you guys on and talk about the gym because it is um it is different. Like, you know, I like to have different stuff on here, not just kind of your run of the mill stuff. And definitely the gyms are not run of the mill. Um, can you guys talk about what makes them different and what you guys like to do? I mean, I'm more than happy to as well, but it's just a cool experience. It's a cool gym. Well, thank you. And I'm gonna let him take over on this one okay. because he's kind of like the base of the gym. Um, well, um, so you guys should flip flop that. But yeah, just when you think, I, about I don't it. know that I'm I want to be the face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they would appreciate somebody with more hair on their head. Um, but I mean, ultimately, I, I like to say that we're trying to be the anti gym. Um, I, I don't want to be just another big box gym that you know is willing to take your money, whether it's ten dollars a month, twenty dollars a month, and not provide you more value other than just the use of some equipment. Um, there's a lot of education that goes behind fitness. There's a lot of education that just goes behind health. And um, it's tough to always find the right answer, even in the age of information, when we have access to everything. How many Google searches have you done over the last 10 years related oh, yeah. to working out and, new, and eating right? And they're all different. Yeah. They conflict. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can hear, you could basically kind of have in your brain what you're looking for and find that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. You're like, well, I want to do this, this, and this. You can find someone who's like, well, this works, mm-hmm. and then you can do it, but that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that's the tough part is that not everything that works for somebody is going to work for somebody else. Um, you know, I'm sure that the way that we structured your workout plan and diet was probably slightly different than the other people who are going through the six week challenge. And that's kind of the point is every single person needs to be treated as an individual. Boot camp style workouts are great. Um, they're good calorie burners, but at the end of the day, you're not getting the focus and attention on the things that maybe you need to actually correct in your body. Um, maybe you're building upon bad habits by doing some of those hard strenuous things and you don't realize that you're putting yourself more at risk for injury. That's really what we're about. We just, we want people to lead, you know, more normal, mobile, healthy, comfortable lives and actually just have the capability to be, be happy. Now, has the gym, it hasn't always been this style. I mean, it, I think there's always been an emphasis on the personal training, but 
I think even as early as when I started going there, I mean, I was just going to lift and do these workouts and do some cardio and do this. And I think that's what most people were doing at that time. When did that kind of transformation happen and what led to it? Or is it something that you've I've always wanted to do? It started to evolve a couple of years ago. Um, but the evolution from even that evolution has been there's it's been, been dramatic. Yeah, Dra- I mean there's been dramatic. Yeah, dramatic is a good dramastic. word. A couple of changes. I like yeah. new words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dramatic. Dramatic. But I think ultimately, you know, during COVID, you guys, I wasn't in the picture at that time, but I was we were together, so I knew of what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but during COVID, you guys were kind of flip-flopping from one idea of what the gym was or what it currently was to something more training focused. Yeah. So, um, ultimately it kind of came down to around COVID. It was like, we're the little fish in a big pond. Um, you know, you're, you're in a, you're in a market here in St. Louis, which is heavily saturated with club fitnesses, planet fitnesses at that time, 24 hour fitness, I think was still around a little bit. Gold's gym was still definitely around Mm -hmm. until they went bankrupt. Um, so ultimately it was, how do we proceed forward? And not just try to, you know, beat them at their own game. What are we going to sell? Five dollar per month memberships, like right. So we got to sell twenty thousand of those to make our, you know, right our 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 nut for the year. That kind of seems a little untenable, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think ultimately it was a shift in our values as a company, and instead of just trying to pack people through the door, it was more of hey, we actually have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of experience on our team. We should try to provide that value to people and do something that makes sense around that. I love that because it is, you're not going to compete with, well, Gold's is a bad example, but you're not going <laughs> to compete with 24 hour or planet fitness or club fitness or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have to be a boutique. You have to provide something different in that space. It's the only way you're going to win, right? Yeah. Cause you don't have, you just don't have the size. Yeah. It's not Can't, even about winning necessarily. It's just about, you well, know, win, win for you. Yes. Not, yeah. not necessarily like beat them, but win right. for you. Yeah. Right. Make it viable and make it make it win and make it a good thing for you. Yeah, right. yeah. You have to offer something different mm-hmm. because you know when I started, the gym was more expensive than going to a club fitness or something. Yeah. But that's okay if you're offering something different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay for me. It's okay to pay more for a more personalized experience, a better experience. Mm-hmm. That's yep. not going to be for everyone, but I think if you can offer that, that's where you. Again, that's where you win. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's Agreed. ultimately the goal. Yeah. yeah. And I think over the last, what, six, seven months, we've transitioned over to this. Not that we weren't doing it before. We were. But now our focus is the semi-private training model, which is what you did. You know, six people max in a setting with a trainer at one time. And every person has their own individualized program. And we've really refined that process down to a T. And not that we're not always – refining we are because we're always going to continue to learn Mm -hmm. um but that's a huge part of it individualizing it letting letting you guys teach us just as much as we're teaching you so that we can make it better for you let's talk about that transformation and real quick i'll just get on a soapbox and tell kind of my personal journey Mm -hmm. um i'll go all the way back to college i weighed 165 pounds um i met my wife shortly after college and she actually worked at a gym. She worked at gold. She was a personal trainer. And I was like, man, I gotta, I mean, I gotta step it up. Right. Like I'm 165 pounds. <laughs> she's working out these big dudes all the time and she's a cute girl. And so that's really when I started exercising, you know, it was after college. Um, and I just went in and did like we talked about back by chest, try that's back and biceps, chest and triceps, <laughs> legs and shoulders, and then some cardio, which I hated. But I did it and uh, it worked like, of course, that works. And especially if you've never worked out, your body is so uh, it's like a piece of clay, right? Like easily shaped. Mm-hmm. Um, I got up to like 185 pounds. Yeah, it was good. I, that amount of time good. Felt, yeah, that's actually yeah. great. Yeah, I, f- I felt great. I looked pretty good um, as I got into my 30s and started having kids and started, you know, owning a business. It gets hard. And you do things like eat more and you stress eat and you eat on the run and you're busy. And that 185 quickly turned into like 202 mm-hmm. and not like it was like people would look at me and I would tell them, yeah, I weigh 200 pounds. They couldn't believe it. 
because I'm taller mm -hmm. and lean and I wasn't, you know, overweight or anything, but I was just carrying a lot of excess weight in my belly that I really didn't need. Um, and so, but I had never changed my workout pattern back and by chest and try legs and shoulders. But you knew you were cardio. Away. You go into the gym. It's big. It's intimidating. Not your gym, but a golds or a planet fitness or something. Mm -hmm. And you go to what, you know, mm -hmm. you do the things that, you know, you don't really want to try out new machines or new moves because you might look like an idiot. You might get hurt. <laughs> you know what I mean? God forbid you have to ask someone for help. Um, the personal trainers there, that experience is terrible. Like I'm sure you guys have been through that where, you know, they're just on the floor kind of watching you work out and you know, they're waiting to talk to you. Yeah. You know, they're waiting for you to do that last rep. They're just kind of sneaking around and you're like, I don't want to talk to this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you turn your headphones up, but they get you and they get you in for a free session. Mm -hmm. I remember I did one free session at, um, club fitness and I told the guys like, listen, I want to be able to do a pull up. And this trainer had me do like kipping pull-ups, like the CrossFit style. Yep. And I was like, I don't want to do those. And he's like, well, that's how you get up over the bar. And I was like, I don't care about getting over the bar. Like I could get over the bar if I need to, I want to be able to do a pull-up. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't get off that. He wouldn't listen to me. And so that was my like free session. That's um, awful. Yeah. That's awful. It was such <laughs> a bad experience. And, and you know that they go through their little training at whatever gym mm -hmm. and they say this, do this, show them this, and then offer them this. Yep. And you know, that works on a lot of people. Uh, but it just, it just didn't work for me. Um, during the pandemic, I think I started going to move and actually worked out with you a couple of times yep. and you gave me some different stuff to do. And, and that was fun. I like that, you yep. know, cause you're working the same muscle groups, but it was just different stuff and it's challenging and you kind of push yourself and you see, can I do this? Um, but then fast forward to, I guess it's been probably like 10 weeks now, uh, that we started the six week transformation. Yep. Um, so it was an awesome experience. I mean, from start to middle to end to now, um, we talked about how people probably come in looking for that magic pill or that solution to get fit, to lose weight, to get in shape. And it's just doesn't happen. It just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there's a saying that it was, it's simple. It's not easy, right? It's simple in the fact eat right exercise. What else? Get plenty of slight sleep. I mean, I don't know, but yeah. basically it's simple in the fact that there's, there's only a couple of steps to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to do, mm -hmm. but it's very simple to do. And that's what I found. And you guys made it super simple. So what happens? And you guys chime in if I miss anything here, but you start with an assessment, mm -hmm. you do a weigh in. Yep. We did like a body fat measurement. Yep. And yep. then what was the water, like a water weight measurement too? Well, so all of that was measured by the in-body scan that we did. Okay. Um, so it gives you that printout that you know, breaks down your total body weight into total body water, how much of that, or sorry, total or lean body mass, how much of that comes from water, how much of it is dry lean mass, then your body fat mass, how much skeletal muscle mass you have. It really gives you a lot of information, but what we are most focused on in the challenge is your percentage of body fat. So um, the percentage of your total weight that is actually fat, basically. Um, now that can actually change based on a couple of factors, one of which obviously loss of fat. The other is the increase of lean body mass. So we focus on that number because it is, it's, it's more feasible for everybody to accomplish that goal with just a few minor changes. And that's what we try to instill in everybody. And, and basically, ultimately, we want everybody to win the challenge. We actually want people to succeed in this. Sure. It's not just to make everybody feel super good, but also getting that win at the start of a fitness journey can just kind of pave the way for further success and further excitement to actually continue to want to follow those healthy lifestyle habits. Um, we're not doing anything that you're not <laughs> supposed to be doing. Like it's just, you know, work out multiple times a week, eat healthier foods, try to moderate the bad stuff that you, you know, know you shouldn't have as much of, um, and try to ultimately develop a lifestyle that is going to be suitable for you to continue on, you know, possibly forever. So that you just stay in shape. I'm with Nate and Allison on the Local 636 podcast here. Thanks for joining me, guys, talking about the move gyms and the transformation system. Real quick, I wanted to make sure you're following uh, the podcast in Local 636. You can hit that subscribe button down here, turn on that notification bell so that you get notified 
when new content comes out, new episodes, new reels, and you can be the first among your friends to have the Local 636 podcast on your phone, wherever you watch it. Uh, also, follow Local 636 on all the socials. That's how you're going to keep up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing, the stuff that's happening in St. Charles. Uh, we have our merchandise. We have some lovely uh, merchandise on here that we do. So we, <laughs> we co-brand um, with other retailers. We can help you out with that. Uh, follow us. Everything is at Local 636. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Go there. Subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> so you mentioned that you're not doing anything like super out of the ordinary, but I think most people just need that accountability. Like I know for me, that was huge with, with, uh, with having the, the semi-private training sessions. For me, if I just say, I'm going to work out, I'm going to be at the gym at 630. It's not going to happen. It just isn't. I'm 41 years old. I know myself. I know my habits. I know my routines. I may be able, I may be able to do it once or twice, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty lazy. If it's six o'clock and I don't want to get up and I don't have to, I'm just not going to. Now, if I know that Macy is waiting on me mm-hmm. or anyone, I'm going to be there yep. because I don't, I don't want to let people down. I don't want to say I'm going to do this and not do it, or I'm going to be here at this time and not be here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not always punctual as Angel knows, but Um, but if I have that accountability, I'm going to be there and I'm going to work out, excuse me. So we start with the weigh-in. I think I was 201 and a half. I think it was my body weight, Mm -hmm. 201.5. And you have, it's not really a choice. It's kind of what you guys determine, but there's either a a weight loss goal or a percentage goal. And what are those? So we've actually just recently changed it to just focus on the percentage because, uh, we kind of, again, we're always learning. We're always trying to make the program a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, we also want the program to be as achievable as possible too. So um, now we just focus on the percentage. Uh, okay. Before there was uh, the option essentially to pick which goal you felt was going to be most comfortable to you. And ultimately, we just found that the percentage one seems to be easiest for most people. And not that we're just trying to set the bar on the ground for you to step over it. But again, we want it to be something that is actually achievable. I would think that most people would pick the, the weight loss because Mm -hmm. it's something that you can see every day. It's something that you almost kind of identify yourself as, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Ed, I'm 41, I'm six foot tall. I weigh 200 pounds, right? Like that's who I am on the outside. And so having that weight loss goal for me, that was, I know my goal was like a percentage. Mm -hmm. I was worried. (laughs) I was worried about the numbers. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to look on the scale and see 180 something, right? Um, but I mean, the body fat percentage is such a, it's such a more clear picture, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Of what's happening um, because it's, you know, different body shapes and types and sizes, it's going to be harder or easier to lose pounds. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily reflect in your strength or whatever else. Talk about that a little bit. So I'll let you talk about the nitty gritty of that, but it's, I think it's very helpful to take away that weight loss goal because some people get so caught up on it. Oh, good point. And especially not that it doesn't affect men. It does, but women Mm. have a scale at home. They'll get on it every day. Mm. And personally, I want to take that out of the equation because I don't want them to focus on that number so much. So if we take away that, they can still weigh themselves. That's fine. Sure. But at this point, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know, and what really matters is the nitty gritty of what he's about to talk about. Because you can be, you can be gaining muscle and that's actually going to cause you to weigh more, right? Mm-hmm. Because muscle weighs more than fat. So the same amount of muscle in an area. I got to stop you there. Nope. What? Uh, a pound is still a pound. A pound of muscle is still the same well, pound, a pound, pound, but the same fat. size mass. That's what matters. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Muscle takes up less area. Ultimately. Muscle takes up less area. It's yes. more dense. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes. So you could be gaining muscle, but not necessarily losing weight. Correct. And that could probably be discouraging. 100%. Absolutely. Especially I would guess women don't like show muscle as quickly or as yeah, that right? their hormone levels are different. You know, they have less testosterone. Okay. Um, but like what you were saying earlier, if you're a newbie in the gym, Newbie gains are going to be about the same for men and women, but I think it's more of that mental piece. Mm -hmm. And if they're not seeing that scale move, they're going to get so stuck on that and so Mm -hmm. discouraged. And a lot of that, that'll cause a lot of people to, to drop out of whatever they're trying to do. And I, we really want to negate that. We want them to have that win. 
So you take that away. Now it's one less thing for them to have to worry about too. Mm-hmm. Their stress comes down. Their hormones start to balance out. And they enjoy it, mm. you know? So mm-hmm. it's that mental piece. And as we're also able to frame it in such a way that like, hey, you're going to notice these things. Like, look for your clothes starting to fit better. Look for, you know, I always recommend people like, take a picture in the mirror at the beginning of the challenge. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the challenge, take another one exactly the same way. Look at the minor differences. Because you have things that you're not going to notice every day. Because every single day you get out of the shower, you look mm-hmm. at yourself in the mirror, mm-hmm. you're not going to see all that stuff. Other people that don't see you all the time, they'll notice it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, we just had uh, Seamus was in the gym this morning and um, he left, said he was going to Branson with family for the weekend. And uh, I was real excited for him. So I was like, you know, has anybody seen you yet? And he was like, nope, nobody's seen me in probably a few months. So this is going to be a big change for everybody because he, 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 he worked really, really hard during his challenge. He achieved some fantastic success. And I, he was like, my, my brothers are going to be all jealous. And I was like, that's awesome. Man. That's go, so cool. go flaunt it. That's, that's so like, cool. you earned it. That's, yeah. that's, you should be happy for yourself. Yeah. Especially in his case, because he actually, um, he got his, his, himself so far back to normal. He, not that I'm trying to share press information here, but I mean, he had a medical condition, which took him out for quite a while. Sure. Um, and he just, I don't know what it was that just made him grit through it, but he got himself back to where he was normal again and then decided I have to make a change. And that's now it's, he's a different person. Well, I can speak to that a little bit because it's not only the semi-private works out workouts, it's an entire nutrition plan complete with a nutrition coach, uh, essentially a calorie counter. Mm-hmm. And you've got that accountability as well, because that's the stuff I can work out all I want. I can go to these semi-private training sessions and then I can go, eat whatever I want that you guys don't see. Right. You know, and I can sit there and go, why am I not losing weight or why am I not losing body fat percentage or why do I still look like this? Um, that nutrition coach is holds you accountable almost annoyingly. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good. Yep. <laughs> which is okay, right? Like which is okay because because you need that. But it's yeah. it's every day. It's like, hey, show me a picture of what you're eating. Mm-hmm. What's on the menu today, you know? And you do a consultation with them. You guys know this, obviously, but you do a consultation with them and he gives you the list of foods based on your body type and weight and what your goal is. And it's really pretty. I mean, it's not like, okay, chicken and rice <laughs> and you can put some mustard on there if you want. Yep. No, I mean, there's a long list of stuff you can eat, yeah. um, of stuff that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I had, I have IBS. I have foods that just, I mean, it's like, if I eat a certain food, it's like, oh, I'll see you guys in 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's my fault. Like, I know what those foods are, mm-hmm. but, you know, a lot of times it's eating on the go or it's just eating what you have. Right. But with that nutrition plan, I was able to curb that and knock it out completely. Yeah. I mean, because I'm eating stuff that's good for me, it's stuff that's more natural and stuff that I'm supposed to have in the right quantities and And I think that's another thing that makes us very different in our gym in general and our philosophy is like, we don't, we don't want to restrict you. Mm. We don't want you to feel hungry while you're doing this. We don't want your energy to go down. We don't want you to feel like you only have to eat chicken, rice, and broccoli because that's not life. Mm. You're not going to be able to sustain that ever. And we want you to have an expansive range of foods that you can intake. And we also want you to still be able to go out and eat, enjoy yourself, be around people, be social and not freak out about it. So that's a big Mm. component too is teaching people that you don't have to be super rigid and super strict to live a healthy lifestyle, to get the results that you want. Yeah. You have to be aware Yeah, and you have to have a plan for it. But yeah, I mean, there's still, I mean, even during that challenge, there's times when we went out to dinner, there's times when I had, um, alcohol, sushi for sure, but that's pretty much mostly in the good category. I would, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, there's, you can certainly make a case. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Not I my mean, sushi rolls, but yeah. 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 I mean, if you're getting like a fried Philly roll and stuff, maybe that's a little outside, but it's still better than eating McDonald's. I think I would have to agree. With I would on say that. it's yeah. probably far better yeah. than that. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but having that and having that as a, as a map really helps you because again, you can work out all you want. And then if you, if you don't know what you're doing in this, I, I kind of laughed at this when I first saw it, but there's like a little guide on how to meal prep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's great. It's like, I'm a guy that I almost kind of need that. I need someone to tell me, okay, here's what you do step by step. Mm-hmm. And here's how you do it. And that's what I did. It's like everything from like, you know, start the chicken first and then do this because of the time. And it, it 
it plans it out to where it's about an hour. It's great. Yeah. I mean, you're giving people all of the tools they need. The people just have to, you just have to do it right? right again. It's not, it's not easy, but it's very simple. If you follow these things, if you do the work, you're going to get the results. And at the end of it, my last way, and I don't, you, you can probably tell me what my body fat percentage was. Maybe to be honest with you, I don't remember exactly what was off the top of my head. What was I, the goal? Five. I do you remember that the goal was 5%? I think I got to four point something. We got 4.7. Yeah. Yeah. Is ultimately where you ended up. Yeah. And a, a lot of that was just mainly, um, it could be. Uh, differences in water variation or something like that, but uh, I'm happy honestly, with 4.7. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, and you I definitely did a lot of good work, but you were also very honest with me in saying that, like, you know, I didn't always follow this or that or anything. Yeah. Um, which honestly, again, is okay. We are not trying to make this an unattainable thing. It's also about developing a healthy relationship with nutrition mm -hmm. and fitness and how that fits into your lifestyle. You're basically, you're just trying, we're trying to get people to make themselves a priority again. Yeah. Because I, it, it sounds like to everybody that I talk to, it, you're kind of no exception. You get caught in the rat race of building a business, having a family, um, doing all of these things that you feel like life should be. And then you kind of let yourself fall by the wayside until mm -hmm. one day you're just like, okay, uh, I don't know how I got here, <laughs> but something's got to change. Yeah. Right? And yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. It's a funny thing that happens too when you start working out, when you start eating right, guess what you want to do? You want to work out more. You want to eat right more. Yeah. Because you see after that first two weeks when you see like, and I, I know this is like, I know we're away from the pounds, but I'm going to go back to it because that was, it was important to me. Sure. You know, after the first week when I'm down four pounds or whatever, it's like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> like it's that momentum. keep doing this. Yeah. And like, it got to the point where we still, I mean, my, still my favorite meal now is we marinate it now and stuff, but is some grilled chicken, some rice some greens, you know, I mean, it's so it's, if you feed your body Mountain Dew and sugar and ice cream, you're going to crave that stuff yep. and caffeine. It's, it's all addictive. Mm -hmm. If you feed it good stuff, you're going to crave that stuff yep. sure. and you just have to push yourself to start it mm -hmm. and do it. And at the end of the day, 4.7%, I think I lost 13 or 14 pounds. Um, yeah. I have actual fat, fat too. It wasn't actual like total weight. I know that you did lose a very large portion of just fat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was right here. I'm not going to show all the camera, but I've showed you. And yeah. seriously, Manny, wh now what are you looking at, Manny? Because we. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what you said, man, my shorts, my jeans yep. fit better. Um, I just felt better. Yeah. I felt better moving around. I was actually going to the chiropractor at the same time because I had some back stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, again, it's that discipline of like when I go to the gym. That's when I stretch too. Mm -hmm. That's when I do my, like, if I, if I don't go to the gym, it's hard for me to get my stretches done. I don't just disconnect somewhere, but all that, I just, I felt so much better. I felt like a, a new person. Um, and let's talk about what I think is the coolest part. And if this is not still the case, we'll edit it out. <laughs> but the program is, there's a cost to it. Does it still work this way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So talk about that because I think that's really cool. And you guys have preached and talked about how you want people to be successful. You want to set them up for long-term success. You don't want to just take their money and have them come throw weights around and leave. Like, so talk about the, the, the cost of the program. And I just think it's awesome. That's your I just do the sales <laughs> tactic here. Yeah. The sales pitch. Um, so the cost of the program is $599. Uh, the reason that it is that high is because, well, if you decide that you're going to just phone in this challenge, we are obviously still paying our trainers and things yeah. like that. But our program is probably the only one that I'm aware of um, that will give you a full refund for just doing the work and putting in the effort to actually make this change in your life. Ultimately, you we set the goal, you put in the time. You make sure that you're doing the, the food prep, um, the uh, nutrition, the exercise. We require those three sessions per week. Uh, now we actually require you to, well, you were doing that too, tracking the food and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and the, all of that is there just basically to help keep you accountable to pushing you towards that goal. And then you have a team of professionals to ask questions to and make sure that you're constantly moving forward. Uh, at the end of the challenge, you hit the goal, you get a full refund of that money. Whether you decide to get it back into your bank account or push it forward towards future training is completely up to you. It's your money at that point. That's and of course, like from a business standpoint, it seems crazy. The goal, but the goal for you guys is to have them go 
put that money back into personal trainers, of course, right? Ideally. Yeah. But sure. But I mean, the reality is if you do this challenge and you hit your goals, it's free. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's free. That's it. Yes. I mean, it's crazy. Yep. Three personal training sessions a week for six weeks, 18 personal training sessions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, semi private. We'll call semi it personal. I mean, it's pretty personal, I would say, but yeah. personalized yeah. programming. Personalized programming. Yeah. You know, it is not it is not one on one. Correct. Uh, the most I've ever had is like three on one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's such a the gym is smaller. It's mm -hmm. more of like a personal training style gym. It doesn't feel like it's a group training session. It's not like a Zumba class or something like that. Right. I mean, Definitely right. not. the three yeah. people can even be doing different things, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's so, the point. That's yeah. The point. And so Macy would say, "All right, you've got this, this, you know, ten reps of this, fifteen of this, ten of this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, three." Uh, three movements and then three sets. Mm -hmm. And so that would take me whatever, 10, 15 minutes. And she goes and checks on someone else. And so you don't need someone there on top of you all the time, but she's there to make sure your form is right, that you're doing it right, yep. that you're, you've got the movement down. And so, yeah, I know it's not like personal training, but yeah. it really feels like it's personal training. And that's what it is supposed to feel like. Cause essentially that's what it is. I mean, like you said, you're in a small group setting. A lot of times Three people will be the max, especially in those early morning classes yeah. because or sessions because a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Um, but your program was personalized specifically for you, um, you know, based on what you were capable of, what you wanted to accomplish. Even your macros were factored into that. So, mm -hmm. like, if you had – if you wanted to do the weight loss, your macros probably would have been a little different versus the body composition um, percentage that you were trying to do. So even your workouts are based around how much you're taking in. So everything is very, very personalized. So you're right. It is kind of a one-on-one -on -one session, yeah. but you're not just one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. yeah. The, and the part I like about that too is not being one-on-one -on -one is like, I always like a challenge. So if there's two other people that are working out at the same time, like uh, there's a couple of times I worked out with Matt, mm -hmm. uh, who is a personal trainer. Matt? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Matt? Wait, Matt or? Or uh, Brian. Brian. Yeah. Matt or Brian. <laughs> one of those yeah he's not gonna watch this <laughs> there's a couple times when i worked out with matt or brian mm -hmm. and uh it's fun because it's like well, i want to do i want to get done with mine before he gets done with his you know yes. or i want to do yeah. or i want to do five more pounds than he's doing yeah mm -hmm. or i want to i want to not rest as long as he's resting you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. i just want to i want to have something on him yeah. yeah um and that's me i don't know if everyone's like that i'm, I'm like sure that. they're not but like, I get that. yeah I'm like, like i want to i want just that little i just want to have a little something over you yep. and so when there's other people in the room that's that's was really enjoyable for me too yeah, yeah. and I, it creates that sense of some people like the community i just want to say it again it's still super dedicated community aspect like yeah. that's mm -hmm. their social time um and so i think that's also another fun part about the semi-private is people are actually it makes it more fun i think so truthfully yeah I mean, you could almost view it as like, I think some people could view it, even though they're doing a positive thing, as almost like a negative thing. Like, I, mean, I got to go in for my personal training session. Like, you know, it's almost like going to the doctor or going, well, this person's going to tell me all these things I'm doing wrong. They're going to make me do these hard workouts. Mm -hmm. When it is semi-private and there's two or three other people, it is. Yeah, you get that. It's more fun. And, oh, what are they doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I'm doing this. Oh, shit. At least I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. yep. So that I think that adds adds to it and um it's just a fun atmosphere man yeah it's always a random movie on yep, that yep. Is, he picks up we try to the gym very fun that's that's <laughs> uh, the the gym doesn't have to be just this like you know gold gym-esque environment that i think everybody has thought it is supposed to be you know yeah i started at gold's actually that's where i first became a trainer and as much as i love that first year of being there because i gained a lot of experience doing that especially with the different populations that i worked with um, I just knew that that was not ultimately going to be a model that I thrived in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, if you, if you want to be like everyone else and do the same thing, that's fine. I mean, that's certainly that model works, mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't know. You guys, I think are like me where I want to do something different, mm -hmm. even if it's for the sake of doing something different, but in your case, it's for the sake of, you know, helping people and showing them a different way. Yeah. Yep. And so. The six week transformation, if you hit your goals, is free. Yeah. Like, why would you not do it? Yep. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. If you uh, want, <laughs> you know what I mean? To be honest, man, actually, we've had an influx of people here lately who have just been like, I'm ready. Let's just take it. Let's, like, I'm ready to do the challenge. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's get this over with in a good way. But yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's actually been very refreshing having a lot of new faces in the gym and people that are just ready to make that change in their lives. And what's great is as they integrate into these sessions, um, Alex is super energetic as a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, he's always a lot of fun to be around. He's super, super motivating. So is Macy, especially for the morning crowd like you. Mm -hmm. um, she's just a little ball of energy that I'm mm -hmm. sure makes you love to hate her in mm -hmm. the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's very much like a love hate thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, everybody just kind of starts to know each other. You start seeing the same people sometimes when you come into sessions and everything like that. You know. Yeah. I love it too because um, uh, just me personally, we had six three six day. I think my workouts ended on six two, yep. mm -hmm. and then I took a month off. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. I think I was at the gym twice mm -hmm. after six three six day, and until maybe a week or so ago. But the cool thing is, my workouts were still up there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to come in, look at my workouts, and go, oh, I'll just jump back in doing these things, you know. Yeah. And yep. um, kind of what we hit on earlier, I did the program, hit the goals. And I'm doing more, right? Yep. Like it worked because I, the two times that I've gone while my workout was on the board and I did do it, I was kind of like, this is not as fun. Yeah. Like being you know, a little lazy about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't have someone pushing me. I don't have someone timing me. Um, if I don't do this last set, who cares? Nobody knows. No right. one knows, <laughs> you know, but security cameras. No, <laughs> <laughs> you watching the, did you do it? <laughs> What's that doing today? Is he following his program? But going back in, no, now I'm not doing the nutrition part uh, because I've I've made that part of my life now. That's but awesome. It is awesome, and I've am super grateful for it. And I don't know if that's the case with everyone. I hope I, that's the goal, certainly, right? As you yeah. do this thing for six weeks, and like anything else, it becomes a habit. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a little weird sometimes because I'm I'll make different meals than my family. You really? know? Yeah. Wow, you are skated. Well, you're far and few between. I, have to say that. I I will say like my the IBS condition has something to do with it. That's I mean, fair. so if, the, if my wife is making lasagna, which is she's, it's so good. All the cheese. Oh, and all the just the yeah. But <laughs> I really shouldn't eat it. Yeah, you fair. know, so I'll I'll grill some tuna or some chicken breast, and I'll be happy. I might have a little slice of it, but sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's become a lifestyle. It's become a lifestyle change for me really and cool. something that I desperately needed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I still have a soda every now and then. Last night we made um, peanut butter and jelly milkshakes. Oh, how do you make those? Because for some reason in my head, I'm just imagining you like smashing this into <laughs> a blender and then just hit and go. Like, Manny, weren't you at, <laughs> you were at Disney recently? Yeah, I was. Primetime Cafe. Did you happen to visit there? I it's did at, not. It's at Hollywood Studios. Prime so it's time. this, it's this diner. It's like a fifties themed diner mm -hmm. and the waiter waiters and waitresses, they're not rude, but they, they have like an attitude kind yeah. of like they'll come by and be like, get your elbows off the table. And they kind of talk to you like that. And at Disney, they do that at Disney. Yeah. What? At Hollywood. So Studios. Go I'm like, what is this? Like, it's a small <laughs> it's world totally after all, totally but opposite you of better be polite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like Ed DeBevick's where they're rude. Yeah. <laughs> they're just, they're just kind of rough. You know, okay. okay, but like Dick's Resort or something. Not, yeah, even, not, not, not even that. Not even that rough. But they have <laughs> a peanut mean, butter man. and jelly milkshake on their menu, <laughs> and good. it's it was amazing. And so we went in October. Okay. So last night I was like, man, I want one of those. And so I just looked up a you know mimic recipe. It's just a milkshake with two tablespoons of peanut butter, two tablespoons of jelly. We'll be down there in <laughs> the beginning of August. So I might have to just be like Alex. Let's go to go to Primetime Cafe. Okay. It is like home style cooking. It's the best meal we had at Disney. Okay. And I normally don't like that kind of stuff. I normally like a nice burger or pizza. This is like, you know, fried chicken, mashed potatoes. It's like from where yeah, I southern grew up. Cookies. Shrimp and yep. grits. Yep. Yep. grits. Where'd you grow up? Well, I'm not from the <laughs> South, but um, I'm from, <laughs> sounds like I am. No, I'm from a really small corn fed town in um, Illinois. Okay. What town? Sorry. Pittsfield. Pittsfield, Illinois. Pittsfield. Okay. I haven't yeah. heard of that. Well, nobody has. Yeah. <laughs> southern? Uh. No. no. Okay. Pretty close to Quincy, don't you? No. 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 I'm literally <laughs> like, off. it's like Quincy, Springfield, Jacksonville, Pittsfield, somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah. Now, we were talking earlier. There's a cute story about how you guys met, or did I misread that? It is, and it's, is it? Is uh, it cute? I asked if you I met at the know. gym, and you both were like, meh. We yeah, did. We Do you did. want me to tell us? Yeah, you can tell. Can you tell everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Tell, tell everybody. 
Um, so when I, I was in undergrad at Lindenwood and he was a trainer at both gyms. Uh, just for the company. I was yeah. moving around from gym to gym. Yeah. I don't know. So he was actually dating somebody else. I was dating somebody else who worked at the gym actually, which is how I ended up in the gym working out there. And things evolved and a year later. Yeah. Two years we later. knew each other. We, you know, said hi around the gym, yeah. very cordial, stuff like that. Uh, I think you and your ex ended up splitting up and then you disappeared for a long time and then I didn't see you for a few months. And then all of a sudden St. Patty's Day. <laughs> one day well, I was ah. still I was still with uh, in my relationship at that point. Oh, yeah, that's right. But I think that you and I had met or we'd seen each other one day at like Club Fitness up there off Fifth Street, mm -hmm. Bass Pro Shops, and then it just kind of went from there. How's the how's it working relationship? Is that okay? Yeah, like you guys are yeah. there together all the time. Yes, all it's the time. Certainly got its ups and downs. It does. I mean, two strong willed people. Yeah. I would say. <laughs> um, and we do butt heads because we have our own takes on a lot of things. But we also, I wouldn't say we agree on most things, mm -hmm. truthfully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people That's have That's because Nate's smart. Nate is yeah. very smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I knew what was going on. Yes. <laughs> but he also is very smart. But but yeah. Um, but I would say overall, it's really it's really. You guys good. ever had a fight at the gym? Yes. Really? Yeah. Like a verbal, like loud loudness and yelling and oh, words no, no. Like just been like it's more like a, okay with each other. i think we need to just separate and i'm gonna go to <laughs> He'll just shut i'm gonna the door leave to the office yeah. and leave <laughs> <laughs> yep yep all right and you guys are newer st charles residents as well actually returning yeah returning okay yeah. we used to live above the gym for yeah. a couple of years and then okay. we moved down to south st louis city to a building that i own and now we are back in st charles you moved to south city Thank and goodness. you had to change your license plate on your car tell me about that uh, right, mm -hmm. this is the story that I heard from someone. Change Maybe it's not license true. Plate on my car. Didn't your license plate say "poor"? Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, had that yeah. as a joke. That was just funny, actually. So, <laughs> yeah, that was actually because of a job that I was working at one point, and I had my car broken into. Right, and then I went and bought a little POS just to get to and from work because I was living in St. Charles at the time, and I didn't want my my nicer car to get broken into consistently, mm -hmm. and just to ward off the jerks that keep breaking into windows around the Grove, I was like, maybe I'll put broke on my license plate. <laughs> and when I checked it at the DMV website, it was like, that's taken. I was like, what about poor? That's available? Sure, let's do it. All right, Super cool. Super fun to ride yep. around in that car. <laughs> poor, not poor enough to not pay for personalized tags. Right, but... <laughs> exactly. Yep. yep. It's kind of just the ultimate idiom. Yep. Did that deter anyone? I don't know. I think the Had car it. itself probably deterred everybody because it didn't have window tint. So it was like, oh, I can see that there's nothing of value in this yeah. stupid Toyota Camry that I had. Oh, at the that's time. interesting. Window tint actually could not having window tint could prevent theft because they see what's in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I always think window tint they can't see in, but that makes it like. It, oh, yeah. A if, if you're yeah. in the city. Well, because mm, I'm not trying to harp on St. Louis or anything like that, but. If you have window tint in the city and it is dark and there is no street light at all, they're just going to break that window and yeah. see what's inside your car. They yeah. don't care. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter that I'm stuck with, you know, whatever my deductible is for insurance mm -hmm. at all that I got to pay, but it just, yeah, it's, it's annoying. We've talked, I've talked about that a lot with clients in my insurance business with the Hyundais, you know, that those are. <laughs> happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So people will, uh, trying to explain to people like your rates higher because you have a Hyundai, like certain companies won't even insure Hyundais anymore. And a lot of people say, well, mine's not one of the models that can be hot wired or stolen. It doesn't matter because the crooks, the criminals don't know that mm -hmm. they're going to break into every one yep. because you have a Hyundai or a, a Kia in that sense. Mm -hmm. You yep. still drive a Hyundai? I do. And mine's one of those models that you can't steal, but, but they tried to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they're just, they don't know. Yeah. Yep. Don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then, so back to St. Charles, what's like, what do you love about St. Charles? Like. What are some of your favorite places to go? What do you like about St. Charles? What do you like to do? I love everything about St. Charles. The charm, the, I think that's really, like it's small town, but it's not, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just that that feeling of hominess. And I don't feel like anywhere else around here compares, truthfully. I haven't found that anywhere else. Yeah, I agree. Yep. What do you think? What are, what are some of your favorite places to go? Like what's a good date night for you? Are you going to Main Street? Are you going to Streets of St. Charles? Yeah. 
eight, nine. I feel like that's something that's very overdue for us, actually. Um, yeah. We actually, I think, spend probably too much time at work, truthfully. But the time that we do spend together is always with our dog. Um, so we're always at the park. We're always outside. We're just always trying to enjoy St. Charles in some kind of different way, whether it's walking up, up and down the Katy Trail or going to 370 Lakeside. Or we, we live right across from McNair Park, which is awesome. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's just the, the entire feel of St. Charles. I, it's, I don't know what it is. And I understand now kind of why people always say like, oh, I won't go back across the river. Mm -hmm. But coming from St. Louis out to St. Charles, there is a noticeable, at least for me, anxiety and stress level that just drops. And I don't know if it's that I was living in South yeah, St. So Louis. Yeah, you probably City, have some like past trauma there. And the driving. Well, it's just like <laughs> I just, there's just so many idiots that drive down there. And it just becomes so hectic that it's like I... You're like this all day. Mm. Just anytime you have to be in the car, at least that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, I feel like I'm not as tense now that we're out yeah. here. Good. Yeah. yeah. Love well, that. Just a nice that's environment. Great. I mean, we knew that St. Charles was great. We when we were living above the gym, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Especially during COVID. Main Street was completely empty. Yeah. yeah. It was quiet. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, and then but when it came back, it was one of the first things to like open, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. so you did have stuff to do. It whereas... got crazy there for a minute. Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> we had front row seats most of the night. Yeah. 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 Most of the Just time. go out on our deck and watch people. <laughs> people don't understand like what was happening. Like St. Louis was like bussing people in. Yeah. I know. It's because Main Street was open and St. Louis City was not. Or yep. St. Louis County was not. Yep. And so people talk about all this crime and stuff that happened. Like it's something that the residents were doing. It's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It's Just these bus loads of parties that are literally i mean we saw three buses just getting dropped off you know and it's it's just uh yeah it was nuts yeah, yeah. it was a weird time it was a very weird time why don't you plug the um transformation and again i just can't, it's just such a great thing so i know you know there's a lot more that you guys do but yep. why don't you plug that and the fact again that it's free yep um yep. and then hit your socials and we'll send you guys on a date night oh, that's <laughs> sweet <Thanks>. thank you <laughs> Um, so yeah, six week transformation challenge, um, 18 semi-private training sessions, uh, with a coach customized personal or customized personal training program, um, full nutrition, accountability, monitoring all the way through, um, ultimately an entire team of professionals that will just give you a direct answer whenever you have a question. Um, and also just if you need to talk, because ultimately there are psychological aspects that come into health and fitness overall. Um, yeah, uh, just the, the ability to have all that support. Uh, for five ninety nine, you hit the goal at the end of the challenge, which we do want you to win. So please just do the work. We want you to hit the goal, um, and you get your money back. Yeah. Why don't you guys plug socials and anything else? Where can we find you? How can we get to you? We are on what Instagram. At, <laughs> we looked this up before. At guys. Move on Main six three three zero one is our Instagram. That's probably the best way to find us. We're also on Facebook. I believe it's the same. Move on Main and move in Westport. Yep. And Facebook. then move in Westport, um, which is over off of Fifi and I guess that's Westport Drive right, across right there. Across from Westport Plaza. Okay. Yep. And then on Main Street, you're on the north end, mm -hmm. um, yep. right down by across from like the Baked Bear. Yep. But uh, north end of Main Street, almost the farthest north, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right before you get to the foundry. Mm -hmm. So come on in and... Uh, Thanks for joining me, guys. This was fun. And Thanks for having us. And, and it was really fun. The program was awesome. I mean, people say this a lot, and they they just mean it to mean that it was different, but it changed my life. It really did. That's We're happy and for it, that. Meal. It set me up for you know future success as far as like diet, nutrition, working out. So just love it. Yeah. We're happy for that. That's all we want. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.